What's up, people? GNR TV, streaming done right. It has all the channels that you would want. You know, the regular channels, channels from out of state, pay-per-views, sports, the movie channels, porn. It has over 2,000 channels in general. Over 2,000 channels. $20 a month for two devices now. Not one, but two devices for 20 bucks, and you get all that amazing stuff. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, there's no sports right now. There's not really many pay-per-views. Well, guess what? There is sports because UFC is back. And there's pay-per-views because guess what? UFC is back, and the rest of the sports will be back eventually, and it's worth it. This app is freaking amazing. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. I've had it for a little over a year now. I'm never going to get rid of it, and I love it. I love it so much. GNR TV, streaming done right. If you don't have it, you need to get it. And enjoy the rest of the show. Let's get slicing and dicing with Sir Sturdy Horror fans. On this podcast, you will hear me and a guest do some movie reviews, random funny horror chats, and whatever else comes to mind. So tune in, kick back, relax, and always remember, I'll see you in your nightmare. Jason's mask. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I got TJ with me, half of 1428 Street. Him and his better half, his girl, his girlfriend. Girlfriend, right? I don't want to say the wrong thing. Oh, yeah, it's it's girlfriend. She might as well be my wife at this point. <laughs> I didn't want to put that pressure on you, though, because she, she might listen to oh, no. the W word and then, you know, be looking for that ring. So, you know. I don't All right, to- right. Oh, yeah, I feel you. I feel you. We've talked about it. <laughs> but um, anyway, man, we've been going back and forth for the past couple of weeks through this crazy pandemic, and it's just been wild for everybody. Stuff's been popping up. We finally get to sit down and record for a little bit. And first of all, I want to say – her artwork is amazing. Freaking amazing. Thank you so much, man. It's, it's been a wild ride watching it grow. You know what I mean? Because every piece she does, she gets a little bit more confidence, and it pushes her to do something a little more crazy with the next one. And, I mean, I think the results have just shown every time we post a new piece. I, I'm, I'm staring at it like, wow. And, like, now some of our customers are, uh, you know, telling us that they they want these knives done so they can go get them signed by the actors. And I just think that's something so special to me because, like, you know, they're the ones that are inspiring us to make this art and put them on these knives. So if it goes to the people who inspired the art itself, I mean, that's full circle as ever for me. And I just, I mean, I think there's a couple of people out there that if I saw our artwork get signed by, I probably would genuinely cry like tears of happiness. That's awesome. That's awesome. though. Yeah. I mean, like I said, this stuff is amazing. I just kept looking through it. I, as you can see, I couldn't pick like one picture for the background. I had to pick a few. Yeah, like, it's so hard yeah <laughs> this is crazy because i i know that takes some time it takes patience it takes skill all that stuff which i have none of more patience than i get the other two but when it comes i can't paint for shit like if it was me it would just be a bunch of stick figures like who is this that's jason that's michael that's freddie kids <laughs> do you recognize the little triangle on the hockey mask <laughs> yeah would you have some six-year-olds help you? That, that's not the point. That's, don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, man, for sure. I, I love when people can do any type of art in general, especially in the horror genre, because it's, it's such a beautiful genre, and everybody, everybody, like horror fan, everybody's so close. It's like a close-knit family. Everybody's nice to each other. Everybody's just... So, right, right. I will I will definitely say that the horror community has been nothing but nice to us. I mean, we yeah. the the crazy thing about 1428 Street when I, when we we decided to name it that, it was a Freddy reference and I wanted to pick a horror reference that could also be work for normal stuff because we don't do just horror stuff. Like we got mailboxes and uh some light switch covers and stuff and we're looking to like, you know, go like my my lady I we just made a post recently. We want to do um a Simpsons piece like Treehouse of Horrors. I think that would be a really cool segue into us doing some different things that aren't just horror related you know appeal to some more customers but um like i mean the, the horror community though has just been so awesome with us and that's what they want from us so that's what we've we've been producing for them i i think it's a great idea now do you guys do like um 
custom orders or is it like she, you guys come up with stuff and do it? Everything that we do right now has been custom. We let someone, you know, come to us. They tell us, like, for example, if you want a Jason, we'll probably ask you what version of Jason you want because, or what your favorite is at least, you know. And then after that, we start to, um, you know, build around that. We might ask you what your what quote it, that you like from the movie or, you know, we might use the, the logo off the poster. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of different things we do. Sometimes we go full out and do double art pieces on both sides. I mean, we did a... Um, uh, Evil Dead one and we uh, posted everything all the pictures on the release day of Army of Darkness and we did the one side with Ash and it says groovy and then the other side we did the Necronomicon and it says the Nikto Nero about the the part of the, the spell that's in the book so I mean we've been we've been we've been growing and just kind of when we get something that we really like we try to you know show how much we like it I mean it's been a little challenging with some of the franchises that we uh, you know aren't is familiar with but we've been we've been getting it through plus it's been giving me reasons to go back and watch some movies that i haven't seen in like you know god god forsaken amounts of time oh yeah oh yeah i i think it's like i said i think it's amazing and it's real it's really unique because i know that takes just just to paint on a knife in general is just crazy i'm just like wow like it's it's one thing doing it and i'm not taking anything away from anybody else that does this but that, that, that like doing it say on a paper or a canvas but then doing it on because the blade is not you know it's the shape changes. Oh yeah, you gotta figure. A lot of the times we when we find some like an image that we want or we want to like use as reference, we have to like slide it and move it over so it, to get create like the best image within the knife because we make like a template for it and stuff, and we try to like. We, we just try to like find different images that people that are like iconic and then try to like give them a little tweak so that it can be ours and nobody has to feel like we're taking any type of artwork or anything like that. Cause we're not, I mean, we just, it's, it's a fun process. That's, that's good though. I, I, <laughs> how, um, I forgot what I was going to say to you now. Damn. Now do you it's do okay. I talk a lot, man. No, no, no. It's, it's not even that. It's just cause I'm, I'm just over here staring at the, the background right here and it's just all right. So, what got you? What got you guys into doing this? I'll ask you that before I ask you what got you in the horror. Um. Well, before. Uh, well, what got me? I'll answer both questions right now because I can. I remember. Um. What got me into horror was I remember when I was like really young. You know, one of the first times I ever like uh, went through my parents' bedroom, so to speak, which is like you know, mo for most young boys, that's probably like their first encounter with uh, you know, adult magazines or adult content or whatever. Well, for me, I found Texas Chainsaw Massacre too. And it was something about that cover, and, and I'm sure you know it's the the Breakfast Club ripoff of the uh, uh, the cover from the the Breakfast Club movie, and uh, there was something about that cover that just like I need to know what this movie is about. And then from there it grew, and like along the way, like my parents kind of let on off on certain movies, like you know I I was allowed to watch Freddy at, after a certain point, and like you know it just it just all started pouring in, and then what led us into um, this, we were working with a, a different mystery box. We were working with a mystery box company um, before 1428 Street happened. And, uh, you know, some things happened that we really didn't like. And it just, uh, you know, it, it ended. And this was an idea that we had that we were going to, like, give to them for something that they could start to put into their box. And when that ended, we just decided to take this and say, like, let's do it ourselves. I feel like enough people would really want it. And we were in some groups of, uh, you know, people who, who collect uh, horror autographs and horror stuff. So I figured, you know, let's start this and we can start. I can start adding more more horror groups and just really sharing and seeing how much see see what the 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 uh, want to to need ratio is for for this type of thing and like surprisingly it's been awesome I mean I think we've been a page for I don't know maybe five six months maybe more and we were we're already eclipsed three hundred likes and followers on our page which to me is awesome like I don't you know it it might not be a lot to people who got one k or something k but man all three hundred and whatever people that follow us that means the world to us because they're the ones that might make an order no i i hear you 100 percent with that for my it's a little different because i'm doing the podcast and i have my group and pages and stuff but it helps you get your name out there helps you know word to mouth and then social media and all that good stuff it it works and that's another thing why i love this platform is i can talk to all I can, everybody that i talk to is a horror fan but i get to talk to horror fans that are doing something creative like this or like i said earlier with the movies and all that stuff and it kind of helps them get their voice out there even more so so it's just 
I like how we all can right, be right. Like I'm, gonna, I'm gonna share this on all my my all the social media platforms for us and stuff. I'm also I know how it goes. I'm a, a YouTuber myself. My uh, channel is Mystery Trash. I do a lot of like unboxings and stuff. I've done some toy reviews. I got a lot of plans for that too. But with 1428th Street blowing up so much, I've been uh you know I'm kind of kind of spread like uh, uh not enough butter on too much bread. Yeah, I mean. You could, I would combine them. I mean, you know, when you're doing your unboxing and stuff, but also show off the new knives she made because that way you can still got you could still have your YouTube channel going, but also promoting this, right? Right, that's what I'm that's that's actually part of my plan. Is I wanted to do a video where I like pretty much come out and say, like, you know, hey, I'm I'm officially part of this now, and you know, it kind of kind of do that and then link it to maybe doing like giveaways on my channel once i get that many people i think i only got like 50 subscribers or something but you know again all 50 of those people watch my stuff is awesome yeah oh yeah it's that's always the greatest and that's something i want to start doing too i'm gonna start doing is giveaways here and there because that that attracts people a lot mm -hmm. Oh yeah, of course. The giveaways always attract people, and then you never know who's gonna stick around and and become you know uh, uh, someone who's gonna listen on the on a, a weekly listener. Yeah, I mean that's happened with me. Um, I uh, I advocate a lot all the time for uh, Cabin Thirteen. They're another company that makes uh they do like busts and and sculpts and like art. And I've I bought in shirts off them before. I want to uh, giveaway. In a uh, another another group that I was in called the Cool Kid Collector Club, they did a horror movie fight club, which is like a trivia. And every week they would do you know pick a movie, we'd do trivia on it. Uh, everybody would answer you. Whoever answered it first got the point, and it was like a point system. We did this over like I don't know five six months or whatever. But I ended up winning a prize from them, and I got a uh, a custom made bust of uh, Freddy coming in. And I already I, I seen all the pictures for it and stuff. We had a little issue with the mailing on it, but um. It, that's coming and like ever since then that's like another you know you got to put on for those companies all the time so that's why like even though i've got my own company and we're not like nearly as successful as cabin 13 but i'm still gonna put on for them all the time because i think that they just do great work see there's there's a company i'm i you could say i'm affiliated with um it's called the nightmare shop also okay got, i've had them on here plenty of times and what they're out in um missouri and what they do they have it's not a brick and mortar store though like they sell all their stuff online but they can get you damn near anything horror related and, you know, get it to you at, for a good price. Like, I consider them like family. They're really good friends of mine. Had them on here plenty of times. Great, great horror. They have a huge passion for horror, too, which is always awesome. And it's just, you know, one of those things where I'm just like, well, let's help each other out. I've sent, they've sent me business cards to hand out. And when I go to cons and stuff, like when I go to cons around here, I sent them business cards. Like when they have stuff going on out there that they hand out for me. So I'm just like, why not? This is one of those things I, try, I like to try to do is try to help each other out any way we can. And believe it or not, between the social media, I mean, if you can't, this is if you can't, if you can afford to buy things or not, but with the social media sharing and then the business card thing, when you're taking some of these business cards and bringing that at a con, setting that oh, table, it's a ton of help. It's a ton of help. Yeah, that's that's honestly something that we want to get into eventually. That's kind of the reason why we want to um, do other things than just knives, so that we can go to cons and be a be a presence there. Just because we don't like as much as we love, you know, the knives and and having them as display, we really don't want to bring them to a con, you know, just for the sake of like, you know, their their weapons essentially. So we would we want we're we're totally that's why we're looking to branch out and stuff, so we can get into like cons and stuff because like you know we all love that type of stuff too. Oh yeah. Hell yeah! I mean, hey, shit. She could. I think she could do knives. Do a couple canvases. Some on. Oh yeah. Well, we got some. We got some. Some pretty cool things like in the works. We uh, we got uh, some canvas shoes, and if those look good, we might start doing those regularly. Um, as well as mailboxes. Um, I know we've had a lot of orders for machetes. We we haven't done one yet, but we're we're getting there. It's 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 actually really exciting because I've been waiting to see a machete you know her do one because we've been i i've been just trying to let her art grow as mm -hmm. organically as possible you know mm -hmm. um oh there was something else i wanted to say i forgot <laughs> how much does she like this though is she real passionate about horror too or um she she loves horror i will definitely be the first to tell you i am way more of a horror fan than she is but the the horror movies that she's a fan of she's extremely passionate about like we've we've had like two or three hour conversations on how Pamela is more important than Jason Voorhees himself to the Friday the 13th franchise. And, you know, I, I actually agree with her because of her arguments that she's made. She, um, she big, we're huge saw fans.
fans here as well. Like she, she loves the Saw movies. I've always had like a deep respect for them. Now I absolutely love them because she loves them. Um, you know, there, there's some, there's some things. I mean, we, we're obviously, we, we've been watching a lot of new horror movies, you know, to try to vast the, the best, our knowledge of like what's going on out there. What's cool. Um, I don't know. I will say as far as watching new horror movies, man, it's real hit or miss out there. I agree. <clears throat> I agree. Like I, I got to keep up with them more, but my there's nothing like an 80s. Like Slash is my favorite genre. Jason's oh, me too, man. Slash. Slashers are my all-time favorite, and then probably second to that would be like found footage stuff. Okay. And like there's nothing like an 80s slash. I love horror in general, but there's nothing like an 80s slasher to me. I, I'll just say an 80s it's horror. It's just movie. one of those – it's one of those genres of movies that I think that are like, like the spirit of it is still alive, but the art itself is like kind of dead. And like the, the, um, the way that every, like we make, we, we try to make slasher movies now with like this few, like the, with current day things going on. And it just doesn't like, there's a level of cheesiness to an 80s slasher that you just kind of expect, you know what I mean? And it doesn't take away from the movie. It only adds to it. Whereas now, if you try to do that, that type of cheesiness, it wouldn't work as well. I don't think. I think it's 50, 50. I think yeah, exactly. Like, cause there, cause for every one that I could mention, that's bad. There's probably one you could mention. That's actually good. I'll say terrifier did great with the, practical effects the cheesiness of it, it was like perfect damn oh it. yeah Very i i enjoyed terrifier thoroughly the only thing i really didn't like about Ter the terrifier is that it gave us no origin for art the clown so the whole time he's doing all these killings you're just kind of like well why is he doing it and i've heard people say i gotta go and watch um all hallows eve which is like has a short of him in it and then i guess there's another movie before that even that has a little bit of art in it but for me it's like okay I want to watch this movie and, and terrifier is the one that everybody was hyping up and saying was really great. So when I watch it, I'm expecting that movie to do it for me. I don't want to have to go back and watch two other movies to get everything that's going on. Although I will say I am excited to see when they do a terrifier too. Cause I've heard rumors that they're going to explain his origin in the sequel, which for me, that really fixes, that fixes my only beef with the movie and therefore I'm a fan. <laughs> Yeah, I think with that, I think with that, it'll go a little, bit, probably not too much into an origin story, but go a little deeper, go deeper. I'll say because I'll even just little, give us maybe like a flashback scene or something um, to 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 yeah. kind of give us like the a clue why he decided that. Oh, I'm just gonna kill everybody and dress up like a clown. Like just just a little something. I mean, maybe that's part of the the the, the ambu like the the coolness with him is that you don't know why he's doing it. Yeah. So maybe that's something they don't want to ever give away, which I, I could respect that either. But it's just, you know, if, if we want Terrifier, if, if the people who created Terrifier want Terrifier to be respected like a Freddy Krueger or a Jason Voorhees or a Michael Myers or anything like that, he's got to have an origin. Like, he's, that's, that's, I'll say that's pretty. To an extent, but if you look at the original Halloween, Michael really didn't have an origin. Like, you didn't know why he was killing. He just, you see him kill his sister when he's little. And then he just grew right. up killing and following Laurie Stroh, depending on which storyline you follow. But right, right. True. Very true. Myers, Myers is, is much like that. But I think even the fact that they gave us just a little, you know, him killing his sister when he was okay. very young kind of gives you like a little bit of like, okay, this guy's messed up from childhood. Like, you know, it, it, so it, like, it gave you something that you could mentally just be like, oh, I'll make my connection there. Yeah, like a starting point. I get that. That makes sense. That makes sense. Which I... I feel like they'll do something for us in Terrifier too. I, and I'm. Oh, I agree. I'm hoping this movie ends up being at least a trilogy, if not maybe four or five movies, just because. When's the last time we had a brand new slasher that was just like grabs you? Like, not only that, but a slasher that can possibly, I'll say, and this is my opinion. This isn't the whole horror fan's opinion. Oh yeah, of course. Everybody's opinion on horror is vastly different. Yeah, it is. For one, I'll say Jason's my favorite. Art's my na he's my second favorite. But I'm saying like, I want him to become like a horror icon. You know what I mean? Like, you say you say you say Jason. You say Freddie. You say Michael. He's, oh him. yeah, he's got he's got the makings. I mean, he looks iconic on camera. There's iconic images of him. He's got some really iconic kills, like the chick who's hanging upside down who he splits in half. I mean, he's got a lot of things working for him. I just think an origin story is really all he's missing, and he can get 
to that point, especially, especially if the budget continues to grow and they put some of that money towards writers who can like really write like a really well crafted movie and it just and and he's in it. I think it'll. I think he can blow up. I, I wouldn't. I would not disagree with that at all. I, I can agree with you on that. Yeah, I can agree with. And I don't think we've like you said. I don't think we've had a good slasher that really grabs you. I mean, the last horror franchise that I saw like sweep the world like genuinely was Saw. Probably, you know. I mean, there's yeah. a little bit of like uh, the those Conjuring movies. Everybody seems to love them right now. But for me, with uh, with uh, the, the the people who make those movies, I wish they would have kept making Insidious movies. And they jumped over and started doing the Conjuring. And for me personally, I like the Insidious movies much more than the Conjuring universe. Yeah, it's funny you say because I'm the opposite. I, like Conjuring one, I I love that. Well, the first obviously they made the first two, but Conjuring one was just done so well so great I see I've, I've tried to watch that movie a couple times and i couldn't get through it i either fell asleep on it or you know i i kept waiting for that the 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 clap scene that you see in the trailer for because i was like that's gonna be where everything picks up and i just i i guess i did, didn't give it enough time i mean i'll probably have to go back and, and check it out to be honest with okay. you again i mean Oh, that usually happens with me too. I'll watch a horror movie and on first watch, I'm like, this is awful. What am I thinking? And then I'll revisit it like a year or two later and I'll be like, this isn't as bad as I thought it was. What was I thinking? But yeah, it's, it's definitely one of those movies. It's kind of a slow burn, but it's, it's a good one. And it's like the clapping game, for example, that I was laughing because we were watching it. My wife, she jumps a lot. We were watching it in theaters. So I'm laughing. And she was like, when we get home, don't even fucking think about it. <laughs> I was just like, what is he? <laughs> But it, oh man, I loved the part with that, and then part two was really good too. Part two was really good. Another French, another quote unquote newer franchise, I guess you can say. It's not a slasher necessarily, but uh, Sinister. Those two movies, fucking loved them. Right, right. I, 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 I enjoyed Sinister too. I didn't, I didn't find those very bad at all. I, I, I dug them. And they're crazy, creepy because you got the, the kids. Like that was the oh yeah the kids the the in that first movie when they did the the scene with the the picture and the family is like hanging there in the in the photograph that they look and they start moving and stuff and you see the sinister guy that was a real iconic shot in that movie I remember when I first saw it I was like this is okay and then that shot happened and I was like oh yeah I really like this <laughs> it changed. Oh yeah. Sometimes, sometimes horror movies are like that. You could watch it and you're just like not feeling any of it. And then all of a sudden they give you one scene and you're like, all right, all right, I'm invested now. Yeah, you're locked. That's what, that's what catch. That's, that's what I like though. I like when it's a movie where, I mean, obviously like when it's, it's good from start to finish, but I like it when there's that movie that you're just kind of like, you're watching it, you're having an okay time with, but then that one part just grabs you. And then it just, not only does it grab you, but it holds on to you for the rest of that movie. And you're just like, holy shit. What a ride! Right. What a fucking ride! And that's that's how it is with. I, I think I, you could say that's how it is with the Conjuring in, in some parts of it, and you could say that with Sinister too, I guess, to an extent, because it starts out a little right. slow, and then once the crazy shit starts happening, it just keeps going and going. Yeah, right. I think I think a great movie that's a good example of that is The Babadook, because man, the first twenty minutes of The Babadook are almost unbearable because of that kid and how like borderline annoying he is. And man, they really drive it home that it's an annoy that he's an annoying kid. But then from that second that that girl gets the phone call and you hear the Babadook do its thing for the first time on the uh, over the phone, from the rest of the movie, it's a roller coaster ride out. And like I'm personally glad I didn't give up on the Babadook before that that first twenty minutes because, dude, that's one of my one of my favorite newer horror movies that are that have come about in a long time. I mean, I remember that movie had me looking at coat racks every time I walked in a room. I had to double take the coat rack because I was just afraid of like i was i don't know what was gonna happen that's funny so yeah man that one was i that's something i gotta revisit i think i only watched it one time and yeah that kid is it's it, he's almost unbearable i don't any person who says oh i didn't finish the babadook because the kid is so annoying i don't blame you at all I do not blame you one bit because he is, he is very annoying. And even like, like even if he already tested your patience up to that twenty minute mark, you might still quit on the movie after the phone call because there's still a couple more scenes of him being a little bit annoying. But he, I mean, I think the kid, the kid did what he was told to do, and it was to be as annoying as possible. And I think for that sake, they drove that home. He did. And it really, it really helped add to the level two of the stress that the lady's feeling in the in the movie. You can tell she's like a really exhausted mom, you know. 
Oh yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Because that little fucking kid and all the crazy shit going on and him acting like hey, right. Oh, God, this kid, man. That that's what I was saying. Watching, I was like, this fucking kid needs to shut up. God. But you understand, you figure out why he's acting what he's acting throughout the movie and all, and it's. Yeah, I gotta rewatch that. I guess I gotta revisit that. Definitely. Yeah. It's it's a good one. It's one of my it's one of my favorites. I mean, it's definitely uh, like I said, it's definitely a little. You gotta have some patience definitely. to get get to where it gets good. But once it gets good, it's really good, in my opinion. Now, um, with your girl, how often does she like make these? Like, how often does she does she like do like? I know it takes more than one a day, but. For example, like one a week, one every couple of weeks. Um. Well, before, back in the day when we first started, it probably took her maybe like uh, two to three days to get a knife done. And now we're at the point where we, if if she's like really dead set on it, we can get probably one done a day, maybe one and a half. Usually, we'll get like, um, you know, she'll start with the the phrase side because that's usually the easier side. Move over to the artwork side, and then usually before bed, we she'll do the the quote side of the next knife for the morning, so she can just wake up and start on the art stuff nice nice now are you guys doing this like every day now that or are you guys essential um i i we've been doing it every day i mean i've been um uh i'm i'm not currently essential but i've been uh i decided to do the we do the there's like an instacart thing up here and you can just like go grocery shop for people so you know i've been doing that and then you know, just it's all the free time has provided us a lot of time to make these. And I mean, if, if, it, if the orders keep up, I would love to be able to do this as a full time job. That would be amazing. Uh, I agree, man. That would be, that would be dope doing something you're real passionate about as a full time. Right. Right. And like the, the, I think the best thing about this is that like, you know, when we were, when we first started and we were in the, the mystery box Th thing you know there was always like this sense of like well what if someone's not happy with what they get and they feel like we robbed them you know and when, once we started this with 1428 it's like i can confidently say i don't feel like i've taken advantage of any customer that's ever come to us i feel like we've given them the best work that we can give them and i feel like that's a feeling that you know uh, the customer deserves and i feel like that's something that like makes us feel really proud in our work and you know the fact that people are want to go take this to get autographed by people just like i can't even get over that feeling still is yeah, like really, very really, amazing that's really really amazing too because it's just it's cool i mean i if i had one i probably get it. It, actually i don't know i might be down with it only because like as much as i'd want to get it signed i'm like what to have what side do i have him sign on because i really don't want them to cover up this awesome artwork Right, right. And I'm, you know, we, we're actually um, working on, we were, we've been throwing around some ideas about ways to display the knives so that we're like some, making something to display them so that you can display both sides and not have to be like locked down. Cause that is a, a problematic situation with our knives where it's like you do this cool work on both sides and you're like, I don't know which side I want to display. So we're, we, we have been tossing out ideas for ways that we can solve that type of type of issue that'd be awesome yeah because that would be tough displaying it like i have machetes i got signed from a few different jasons actually i have one sitting right here a couple sitting right here and i have like no place to this one's from ari lehman oh that's sick man i got a um a hockey jersey that uh, uh jason hockey jersey that's signed by ari lehman nice nice and then we got over here another one from uh, CJ Graham. Oh, nice. That's uh, that's that's part three, right? Or no, for six. four, six, six. Yeah. Oh man, I'm way off. Part my, part my, I know that like Kane, Kane Hodder is like like six through through ten, and then all the other ones are different people. Everyone, and I always get them mixed up. Besides Ari Lehman, because I know he's like baby Jason. Yeah, that's Kane Hodder's right there. Nice man, I would love to get his autograph. I don't have his yet. I want to get his again, but um, man, it's <laughs> it's crazy though. Like it would be just seeing how much bigger these blades are. It'd be, it would be cool to get a a machete painted, like a Friday the Thirteenth machete painted or something. Yeah, my original idea for him was to do the do a whole timeline, do one side with the Friday the Thirteenth logo like really big, and then on the other side do like the little heads all the way down and do like a timeline where it's like, you know, the, the baby Jason and it says like 1980, you know, uh, part two, Jason, and like put the years that all the movies have come out and take it all the way up to the, uh, the remake. 
really. I was, I actually like the Friday the Thirteenth remake. That would be that. That's that's an awesome idea right there. And the Friday the Thirteenth remake, I like it. I did go see it twice, like back to back weekends. I did not. I don't love it though. I don't love it though. You yeah, know, a know. lot of people that are fans of the J- of super of Jason's supernatural, um, you know, side don't like it because it t- it totally took that away with like the bells and stuff. But I I liked it that they kind of gave a, a new twist to Jason, as if Jason wasn't just your you know dumb zombie body. He was like, no, he was crafty and innovative, and like that was his land. Like I I, I like what they did. I mean. It, it was just a, a new look at Jason. I thought was really cool, and I also like how the movie kind of went and took two and three and and packed them together. And and you know, because as a Jason fan, I might get a lot of slack for this too. But part two is been one, is one of those movies where I'm always on the fence on because the story is so good, but yet J, like the potato sack Jason is just. You know, like he doesn't really look awesome until they knock his mask off in that movie. And I I think like the the standalone scene in in part two is the uh, where she puts on his sweater and, you know, convinces him not to kill her. And you and you see the awesome shrine that he has. Um, But like I always, you know, the hockey mask was always iconic with Jason. So I liked I liked that the remake didn't spend a lot of time with potato sack Jason. I mean, he was there. It's respected. And then they went right into the hockey mask stuff because as a Jason fan, I think that's why we all showed up. Yeah, no, that part. I I agree. (laughs) I don't mind the potato sack one. But um, what I was going to say, my issue with the remake was it was too jokey for me. Like, I felt like the movie should have been a, a way darker tone. And I feel like it should have been based in the 80s, not like 2008, 2009 with the self. Just based in the 80s, way darker tone. And that's pretty much it. I mean, besides the guy that was from Supernatural because you knew he wasn't going to die. I'd oh, yeah, he had him. plot armor written all over him. I'd rather, them, I'd rather them use somebody that nobody knows and kind of throw, you know, because everybody else in the cast I've never seen before. I'm not saying nobody knows them, but I've never seen them before. They're not like, you know, big name. Right. The only other cast member in that uh, that remake that I know of is the the Asian character that's in there that dies. He was in a lot of movies in like the early 2000s. And he was one of those people that I think, you know, Hollywood wanted to make him hot, but he didn't really get hot. So he just he had a lot of like he's in. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie uh, Perfect Score. It's about like high school kids who try to steal the SAT answers. It's like an early 2000s, maybe late 90s movie. It's got an NBA player in it too, but he plays like a stoner character in that movie as well. So like he that I, I liked him a lot, but he didn't. I think he's I think uh, he's also in the Nightmare on Elm Street remake, and he's the, the guy who dies um on the webcam shots. Like he's making YouTube videos in the Nightmare on Elm Street remake. I have to check that out. But yeah, yeah it's, it's a cameo scene. Like he, he doesn't have, he's not like a real character. It's just like one of the characters starts looking up on YouTube to see if somebody else has been affected by Freddie and they find his videos and he dies in his last video and she's watching his YouTube video where he gets killed by Freddie. I'll have to check that out. But yeah, like I, I don't mind the comedy in Friday the 13th, the Friday the 13th, because there's comedy in every single one of the movies. Oh yeah. I felt like it was just over the top. Like it was too much in this one. And it should have been a darker tone movie because the way Jason is, I don't. My, I I actually enjoyed how he had the setup with the bells and everything that kind of system because it makes more sense of how he gets everywhere so fast. And I know, and even though people do argue with it, but Jason did run in like one through four. Jason ran. Yeah, yeah, facts. So that part doesn't bother me at all either. It was just honestly, it was just that it wasn't a darker tone. It was too jokey. Right. One of my favorite all time favorite remakes is the uh, the 2003 Texas Chainsaw remake. And ever since I saw that one, I really wish like the director who did that one would would have went around, you know, made the cycle. Because like, could you imagine if we got remakes for all the great slasher movies, but they were all done by the same director? So like the tonal stuff is the same, like the tone that they took that Texas Chainsaw movie in was just so good. And I feel like like that could be applied to that that Friday the 13th remake. Like, if they would have took the Texas Chainsaw tone and even left the story the same, I think that movie would we might have sequels to that movie. I agree. Oh, another thing I didn't like. I didn't like how Jason kidnapped a lady that looked like his, similar to his mother. It's because he doesn't kidnap. That was the other. Right, movie. right. Other than it, it was Ed Gein. It was a fun movie. It was still a fun movie. It was a good movie. The intro was one of the best fucking intros I've ever seen in a fucking movie. The way it started out, I was like, holy shit. Like, I remember we went to go see it, and I believe both weekends we went, 
right after the intro comes and it shows Friday the 13th across the screen, people were just clapping. Like, wow, it was amazing. That intro was just... Yeah, man. People get excited when, when you, you you slap that Friday the 13th logo on something. I know, I know, I know. But that intro was just, like, powerful. I was like, holy shit. I mean, didn't it end with the girl? No, it was the bear trap, and he was going to hit the guy with the machete over the head. Yeah. And that's the one. I know part of it was the girl, the campfire kill in the sleeping bag. I, that was awesome how they did that. Had her hanging up over the fire and cooking her. Just yeah, that that is a good one. And they're, the Friday the 13th franchise really, I think, sets the bar for kills in a slasher movie. Hell yeah. I mean, the only movie, the only franchise I think that can rival the, the kills is like Nightmare on Elm Street. And that's just because Freddy is a dream demon. So there's a lot more wild things you can take that premise. in. but as far as like ground based killers, I mean, Michael or I mean, Jason's got way more better kills than Michael does. Oh, Michael, yeah, then everybody. The only one who could, who has, who could be in his league, as far as I'll say top kills, is that upside down kill by Art. That was just. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is a really br- br- brutal kill, man. Brutal kill. I was like, ho- like, when I first seen it, I was like, holy shit. Like, that, wow, that was awesome. That was fucking awesome. That's something I would love to see on the big screen. Something like a kill like that. Like, holy fuck. But, man, it's. Horror, man. <laughs> yeah, man, that horror is life. It really is. It really is. You get like the nicest people in the world too with this stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, I really have the the horror community has been great to me. I can't say anything wrong, bad about that. I've made so many friends off of just like you know online stuff, and it's weird because I don't have a lot of like friends in real life. So you know, because and even with this quarantine, it's not like I can go hang out with them anyways. Yeah. So um, you know, I've been making a lot of friends th- throughout the horror community, and it's like it's really awesome. I mean, now I, I have like friends in Chicago, and I don't know anybody in Chicago, but now it's kind of cool. Like if I ever went to Chicago, I I know some people out there that maybe would you know want to hang out with me so i always think that's that's kind of cool no it's it's freaking awesome man it's freaking awesome i can't wait to see what you guys do next with your your art too because it's just yeah again it's amazing well we got a lot of orders coming up so there's there's a lot of uh, a lot of good stuff coming up i mean we I, I don't know if you've seen yet i got it right here with me though but the, our newest piece that we just put oh, out wow. is the the myers the death has come come to your town that's um, uh, we got, a, I think the next one we're doing right now, currently we're doing a Pamela. Uh, and then after that, I think we got, we got another Captain Spalding. We got another Jason. There's some, uh, a Hellraiser, the shining. Um, somebody just placed an order with us earlier for, um, uh, day of the dead or not, not day of the dead. Um, dawn of the dead the original dawn of the dead so i'm excited for i'm excited for all of it because it's just like every time someone gives us a new franchise it just widens our portfolio of stuff okay so that's how you guys do like, you, you do all yeah because we make every order custom like when someone messages us we're like okay what movie were you thinking of and then usually they're like well what have you done before and you know it, it we, it goes if you, if anybody's wondering that's listening um uh, if you go to the 1428 street facebook page we have a post of uh mo- frequently asked questions so if you go there i'm pretty sure any question that you might have will probably be answered for you there awesome, awesome. as far as like the specifics but we usually you know we, we try to make them all custom made because we don't want <clears throat> you know we we want everybody who's ordering one we want this to fit their collection personally and not just be something that like you know i don't i, I don't want people to feel like they buy a knife and then somebody can turn around and buy the same exact knife, yeah. which, which yeah, somebody could if they really, really like it. But I, we try to make it so that every knife, you know, fits your collection specifically so that it's, you know, that you feel the happiest about it at the end of the day. No, I like that. I like that idea. That's, uh, that's actually what my question was, was like, you said you do make, you do. So all your knives are custom orders. And then it's just like, uh, I guess it makes it easier for you too. So you're not just making a whole bunch, not that people wouldn't buy it, but you're not making say a whole bunch of duplicate knives and you only sell, say, say you make 10, but you only sell three or four of them. Then you're like, right. And then they're, they're just stuck there. I mean, I think what something we might may do in the future, like for example, we've had some ideas for something to do for mother's day and maybe, you know, focusing the eye on some uh, horror female leads that are like super iconic and maybe, you know, find the, the, um, 
you know, I, for example, for me, I'm a Nightmare fan, so I like Nancy a lot. And I think in Nancy, in uh, Dream Warriors specifically, she totally plays the mother role to all the other Elm Street kids. And like, I've fought in Freddy before, and she's like, I'll, pro- you know, the protector type thing. So maybe do something like that, you know? And then um, sometimes maybe down the road, we might do like a mystery knife thing because we you know we were once in the mystery box game so like some people who just like really like if we can get ourselves to a point where we have a following enough that i think that would be a cool thing to do where someone can you know buy a mystery knife from us oh that would be awesome that would be awesome even doing like a, um just throw out an idea actually you know what i'll save this idea. we could wrap it up and i'll save this idea for when we're done recording because okay yeah sounds good but i have an idea like right here um is there anything you want to plug or um 1428th street on facebook go like us we also have an instagram don't have a lot of followers um we'll be uh running our first uh page giveaway on the on may 1st so once that comes around be on the lookout because you know we're gonna we're gonna give one away for free to somebody um i'm trying to just follow us and uh be on the lookout because you know there's a lot more than just knives coming and it's a lot more than just horror coming too like we're gonna branch out and do some i mean we love the simpsons that's coming and there's also i mean i wouldn't be surprised if we do some rugrats or ninja turtles or like you know just far out far out there like because you know it's not we we i'm a i'm a huge collector and that's what brought me into this so as far as i know that people love to collect a, a multitude of different things so if we can help build people's collections and make them feel like their co- collection is that much more closer to perfect and that's what we want to achieve oh, hell yeah hell yeah well yeah man definitely everybody go check out 1428 street on facebook and on instagram and uh what's your youtube channel again um uh, mystery trash if anybody wants to check me out on mystery trash yeah that's uh the you know mystery is fam that's my tag for <laughs> for mystery trash yes yeah, def- definitely check this all out and I know they got some great things coming. I'm about to talk to them about a couple things real quick. And uh, you guys have to just wait and see what happens after that. But um, thanks again, man, for coming on. For all yeah, no problem. Listeners. Thank you for having me. Oh, anytime, man. For all my listeners, you should know where to find me by now. But if not, I'm on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, anywhere you can listen to podcasts on, YouTube. Uh, I have a Facebook group and a Facebook page, Horror with Search 30. If you ever want to be in this podcast if you ever want to be on this podcast shoot me an email horror with sir dot sturdy at gmail.com i'll get back to you as soon as possible and enjoy the rest of your days nights and as always i'll see you in your night